I'm Barbara Adam. I'm a social theorist working in Cardiff University. And my specialism is how we relate to, use, understand, approach time. I look at the full breadth of cultural experience with futures. And the most significant bit that came out was that the industrial way of life brings with it a kind of understanding that we own the future, that it's ours to dispose of, to use, to commodify, to, to do with as we need and please. And I found, for example, that this, of course, hasn't always been the case. The future didn't always belong to us. It uh, belonged to the gods, later also to one god, to the Christian god or to the, the Jewish god, and, um, or in other cultures, it belongs to the ancestors. It certainly was never for the humans to dispose of. Time was the property of gods and, and those extraterrestrial beings, whatever they may be. Only space and matter was at the disposal of people. If you think about the future, you think about the future as the thing that's not yet. So as that, it's not real. We think of the future as something that's in our imagination, that we have to conjure up and then try and control or try and create or try and do. But that isn't quite how it's, how it's actually functioning, because if you think what we are doing now, in our context, Western, Britain, it's the past futures of our predecessors that we are actually activating, that we are responding to, that we are trying to deal with. So, if you think in, in terms of processes, then the, then the future is something that is ongoing from eternal past right through to an open-ended future. It's not something that is started here and now and we have to imagine it and then make a blueprint and then do it. It's not like that at all. Futures are being continuously created. There are processes that are in progress. They are past futures in the present. Our future presents are being created in the present. And so there's ongoing layers and layers and layers and layers of actions that continuously play themselves out through long periods of invisibility and latency. And unless we can understand that invisibility and latency as real, we have no hope of practically engaging with climate change, must understand processes as real, even if we can't see them, even if they haven't yet emerged as symptoms anywhere. 